Hey everybody, Debbie Starr here. So I wanna to talk to you about automating your business, specifically emails and nurturing those ideal leads that are coming in. So you hear everybody talking about scaling your business, making a million dollars, but here is the deal. Uh, until you build in some backend automations, uh, you'll never be able to do everything just like piece by piece, right? So I just want to show you how easy it is to set up these automations, if, even if you hate tech, even if you wanna throw your computer out the window, all right? So the product that I'm gonna be showing you is my favorite all-in-one marketing tool, Go High Level, uh, but there's a lot of white-labeled companies out there using the same thing, Funnel Gorgeous, a lot of other companies, and uh, even like Kajabi, uh, all of those, the you know the foundation is the same and once you understand the foundation you'll see it really is very easy you don't need to be scared of the tech so why don't you follow along and i'm just going to show you how you can set this up and also i'm just going to share some of my best practices all right so let me just uh hop over here and hopefully uh, you can see this let me back out of here and i'm going to go all the way back to the beginning so again, this is go high level. Um, as of this point in time, this is May 2024. Uh, this is what it looks like. So over here on the left, you have automations and that's where all the magic happens. My first word of advice is create folders. We can now create folders. And what I like to do is keep everything in the same folder connected to that same product. All right. So the example that I'm showing you um, are the lead magnets and what happens when people click on that lead magnet. If I was running a funnel, let's <clears throat> let's say I was doing a launch, everything connected to that launch, I would put into one folder. It's just going to make your life a lot easier. OK, so first step, create a folder just for that. And then you just click on create workflow. And quite honestly, uh, there are recipes or basically templates. Most of the time I just start from scratch. It's a lot easier in my estimation. So I'm just going to open up this one here instead of you watching me type it. And I'm just going to quickly show you the best practices. So when you create one, the first thing you do is you give it um, a title and make this title as long as you want that you remember what it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Nobody else is going to see this. All right. The next thing is under settings and lean in and listen. This is one area that people kind of overlook. The uh, settings that you need under settings is turn on allow re-entry. The reason I say this is somebody opts in to your lead magnet um, and then next month they opt in again, just let them do that. Also, when you're testing, uh, you can do that. For the most part, we're talking general things here, okay? So I turn that on. Not going to get into every little thing here. I'm just showing you best practice. Under sender details, if you click that little tag and find user name, the same thing with the email, click the little tag, come up here to user, and go to email. And I'm gonna show you why that is going to save you time. Now I'm all about systems and <clears throat> setting up these shortcuts. So make sure you do that. And then the last thing here is mark as read. The reason is when you get all these things flowing through the funnel, uh, even though you see them, then you would have to manually mark them that you've read, read, read them. So just turn that on. All right, so that's what you do under settings. And now let's go to the builder. In the builder, you always have to have a trigger. And what does that mean? It just means what starts this action. And so just think about the if then type of statements. All right. If this happens, then do this. All right. So in this example, if a form was submitted and I like to uh, spell out what the form is uh, because I forget what I had for breakfast yesterday. OK, so this was a 2024 goal planner form, a, a freebie that I had. So that's the name of the form. And then you come down to filters and you find that form uh, that they fill out. So that's the trigger. That's what starts the process. OK, uh, if somebody purchases something, uh, what you would be doing, uh, you wouldn't add it here, but kind of the same thing. You would go down and you would find uh, that. So here's the form submitted, but you would find the one where they uh, purchased that and then you would do the same thing. So um, it's down here someplace. Uh, order order form submission. OK. But again, this is for a freebie. The next thing that I always do is assign to user and I'm assigning it to myself. 
You might be the only person in your account, or you might have a VA or team members that help you. Why do I assign it a user? Remember under settings up here where I um, put in that username and user email? When I assign it to myself here, when I start building out these emails, then I don't have to say who it's from because it's going to pull it from that person. OK, so in this example, somebody opted in for my 2024 goal planner. I assign it to myself and then I always like to tag any actions, activities, everything that happens. So that contact, if I pulled up that contact, I could see basically their history of what they've been doing. So I've added a tag that they've opted in for that particular freebie. OK, uh, you don't have to, but I put in a wait because when somebody opts in, I take them to my thank you page and on my thank you page, I have a quick little, I don't know, one minute video. So I want to kind of stall them just for a couple of minutes and I just tell them, check your email in about five minutes or two minutes. You don't have to have the wait, uh, but you know what happens if there's no wait? Uh, they fill it out, then they hear the, the ding and they run over to their email. I want to keep them on the thank you page just for a couple of minutes. All right. And then here's my email. So the um, I just click and I say, I want to send an email and um, email to deliver their free opt-in. Again, here from, I could type my name or I could click and say user and then my name, but I don't have to because I put it up here in settings. In this particular uh, workflow, there's only one email, but here is the time factor that's gonna save you. If you were doing a nurturing email where you were sending out five or 10 emails, you don't wanna get in here every single time and do that, all right? Just quick little shortcuts for you. And then here's the uh, little subject line. Uh, studies have shown if you put little emojis, it just gets people's attention. I always use emojis. You can try it, see if you like it. Uh, we're not gonna dig into all of this stuff here, but um, I'm just showing you the workflow. So here is uh, the quick little email that I'm sending. And then down here, this is the other important thing. Let me make this a dab bigger here. Just, I didn't realize, um, user email signature because I've assigned it to myself, okay? This is the other beautiful thing. Not only is it gonna pull my name and my email, my um, unsubscribe signature, all of that kind of stuff gets added to this workflow. So that's why it's important when you're building out your workflows, first step should be assign it to the user, add a tag. If you wanna wait, you can. And then here's that first email. So now if this was a nurturing, then at this point I could add another wait here. Okay. And um, we'll just say, um, and I like to name all of my actions. So I may say one day wait. And then down here, I'm going to say one day. Okay. So here's one day wait. And then I could send another uh, email. All right. Is that making sense? So here's send email and the, the whole, uh, and then my action name, I might say um, second uh, nurture email or something. I don't have to fill out the from, uh, the from name or from email. And then here in the subject, I might share a tip with, hey, <clears throat> by the way, that um, a goal planner that I uh, sent you, here's an additional uh, training video to go with it. All right. So is that uh, making sense? And then of course, when you get all done, uh, make sure that you've turned this on to publish, hit save, and you're good to go. So let me uh, hide this and come back. So it's that easy when you are creating your automations or your workflows. And I want you to think big picture, all right? Because you want to scale your business so that you're not having to do all of the stuff manually. And when you build in these systems, then the beautiful thing is it's just rinse and repeat. So the next time you have a lead magnet or the next time you're sending out a nurturing sequence, you can copy that whole automation and then just change pieces. So if this was helpful, let me know. Uh, if you're not part of my Digital Business Academy membership, this is where um, I give you hands-on support. My eyeballs and fingers are there to help you. So reach out um, if you'd like more details about that. And as always, if you were watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button if it was useful, and I'll see you in the next video.